Okay, red deer antler. And we're gonna make one of these. Right, when you start working with antler, um, you need to start thinking about it before it even goes on the light, right? Uh, what you're looking for, right, if you have a look at this pen, right, see the way there's a white stripe in it? And there's loads of different colours all the way through it, right? What you have is in an antler, I'm going to a piece so you can see it clearer. You can see it clearer in this piece, right? Right. You have, right, a marrow, which is that dark bit, and you have like a horn part. An antler is basically a bone, right? Which deer shed every year, and that's where these are from. And uh, the different colours are the different parts of the bone, right? The dark one with all the colours in it is the marrow. Right? Now, the marrow is very porous. I'll show you how to get around that as I'm doing it, right? And the white part is the horn part. So you've got to start thinking about that while you're at this stage, right? I'm not going to use that one because I've already cut it. <laughs> Let's put that pen away, make sure it doesn't get dusty. Right, right, what you're looking for is, if I put that tube there, I'm not going to get any white. Right, so I need that tube to kind of be there. Right, let me see if I can put it, see if I can get it better for the camera. Right, if I put that straight in the middle there, which is where you would normally drill a blank, right, I'm just going to get marrow. I want it kind of off to the side a little bit, so they get some of that white. So you've really got to start thinking about that now, while you're cutting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this. Right now, because of the way I have to drill, I'm going to mark this one a little long. Right, and then I've got the smaller one, which I'll mark to around about the correct length. Now I just need to cut those off. Now, be very careful when you're cutting this stuff because it really does not taste nice and I wouldn't be breathing it in if I was you. So I'm going to throw a mask on when I'm cutting it. Right, now I have a mask on, right? Now, uh, it cuts a lot like wood. Right then, it cuts a lot like wood. Right, you just gotta be careful and slow. Right. See how wide the marrow's gotten there now. See how wide it is there. Right. Now, for what I want in this pen, the marrow in that is too wide. I will not get weight in that. Right? Unless I cut it. I, I will not get weight in that unless I cut it way down. Which is what I have to do now. Right? Now, I do not want the drill bit going down, smack down the centre of this. I want it going off to the side a little bit. So that I can get the weight in as well as the marrow. Now, be very, very careful when you're doing this because it is dodgy. Right? What I like to do is... To clamp it. Right. Make sure the clamp is flat. Clamp it down so that it can't move. Right. So my fingers are well back away from that saw blade. Right. Now the whole thing is flat and I'm well back away from that saw blade. 
Right? And what I'm going to try and do is cut close to that marrow. Right? What I'm going to try and do is cut close to that marrow. Now what, it, what that's going to do is it's going to move the cut from there to over there a little bit so that I get that weight into it. Right, do that on, do that on both of, on both pieces. And you see these little pieces here, don't throw them away. They look very well laid into a box or a bowl, or the edge of a bowl. So keep those little bits. Right. Now we'll get over to the light and we'll start drilling this. Right, right, we're over at the light to drill this. And I'm going to put a centre punch in it first. Right. Now, from trial and error, I have found that about 220 is a good speed to drill antler at. Yeah, I'm off to the side, getting some of the marrow and some of the white, which is what I'm looking for. Really slowly. I'm going in there really slowly. As I said, about 220 seems to be a good speed to drill this at. Something I've noticed is uh, it's very hard to actually get the drill to go in poker straight. That you do get, see the oscillation in that? That you do tend to get that quite a bit. Even if you do what I did there and drill like a pilot hole into it, you still seem to get it. Sometimes you get it perfect. Sometimes not. Right. right, and there's the hole. Right. As you can see, I've got marrow there and I've got white there. So that should work out just nicely. And then the other end, I've got full marrow, which is fine. Right, because I'll get, I still get the white piece probably about that long. Right, you know, just do the same to the other end. Right, okay, right, and there's the second piece drilled. See, white up here. This might get a slight little bit of white there. Marrow, marrow there. So that should be a good one. Now we get on to turning this. Well, first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, glue the tubes in. Now, if you're using uh, antler, give the glue some extra time and use plenty of it. Because it takes, uh, the marrow will drink the glue in. Which at one stage is actually an advantage to us. So I'll glue these tubes up and I'll be back in a minute. Right. Just a quick tip, if you're ever, if you're using pens and they have really wide tubes in them, right, and you're using a pen mill, right, you can get pen mills that have loads of different size shanks on them, 
but they don't always go to the size you want. Like I can't get a shank to fit that, right? Just get a normal seven mil tube and turn something down that slips over the tank and fits in there exactly. It keeps your pen mill centered when you're uh, milling it down. So that's just a quick one. Back in a sec. Right, we have the first piece mounted on the light and I'm gonna go up to, until I get it round, I'm only gonna go up to 1500. Now it cuts pretty much like wood, except it's gonna take you longer and it will absolutely eat the edge on your tools. Be gentle with this. Right, you cannot take big cuts with this. You've got to be gentle. Yeah, I'm round now. now. You can see the contrast there. Right. There's marrow, there's the white. Now we're going to go and put an edge on this again. Right. Now that I'm round, I'll go to my normal 2000. Now we'll start shaping this. Pushing so you see where I'm at. Now shape it. Hoping if I drill right that I still have a small amount of that weight there. Hopefully. And I do. See the white stripe there on the edge? You'll see it better when it's cleaned up. I like to put a chamfer on the top of these to sort of the feeds into the uh, the cap. Okay, now it comes to sanding. Now sanding on these is a little bit different. The marrow is porous. I don't know if the I've zoomed. I've brought the camera down as close as I can. Um, the marrow is porous, and you need to fill those holes. Now there's a load of ways of actually doing this. Right, I just have my personal preference way of doing it. Right. right. Which is uh, a slurry method, right? I need to fill all those pores. Right, so what I'm gonna do is get CA, thin CA. Right. And basically just cover the blanket. Now this is not the finish because as anybody who watched the channel for a while knows I don't particularly like CA finishes on pens. As you see there's a fair bit gone in there. Now before that dries, right, I'm just going to turn it on to about 250 so that the CA doesn't splatter and I'm immediately going to start sanding that. 
what I'm trying to do is build up a slurry to fill those holes What I want to do is get the CA off the, off the surface, but I want it to go into those holes. See the dust that's coming up on the sandpaper? I want that dust in those holes. So what I'm going to keep doing is uh, sanding it pretty slow, right? But I'm going to keep running the paper in so that those holes get filled with that sawdust. Or Oh, antler dust, I suppose you call it. I'm going to reverse it. Get the dust on the top going in. So that the dust goes into those holes both directions. Now the thing is, because the CA is wet, your sandpaper is actually going to get quite hot down this. Just keep it moving. Try not to get the blank too hot. Now you see the way the dust is after going into those holes. Right, so I want to see that again to lock that dust in there. Right, that's the A, I will let go off a bit more. Right, hit it again. Same again, I'm still trying to fill those holes. As I said, the sandpaper gets quite hot down this. It's because CA isn't uh, going off. Even though I'm only spinning at about 400. Yeah, sandpaper gets quite hot. I'm using 150 grit, by the way. Right now, now that the CA has gone off and stuff and I'm dry sanding, I have my mask back on because you do not want to be breathing in this stuff I'm going to sand this both directions I'll be sanding up to 600 Now the dry sanding is done I can take the mask back off and um, clean it down with METS or denatured alcohol. Now you can see the white parts as compared to the dark parts on it. Then what I'm going to put on it is some shellac based sanding sealer Just to seal the surface on it And we let that dry Now that's dry, I'm going to use some York, some standard Yorkshire grit. Right, uh, because I'm wet sanding now, no need for a mask. That's one of the advantages of Yorkshire grit, it keeps the sanding dust down. There's no sanding dust at all. Yeah, like with anything else, uh, because this is antler, this takes longer. 
I'd say if you probably timed it, it takes twice as long to do a pen out of antler than it does out of uh, wood. And if you're finding this interesting at all, if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video, it helped the channel out a good bit. And if you feel like it, there's a subscribe button just down there, I think it is. If you wouldn't mind hitting that. I also would help the channel out. But the, subs but the, sh the like is the most important. So my social media manager tells me. For those of you who don't know, my social media manager is my teenage daughter. And I frequently get, oh, Dad, you should be doing this. And then, that's pretty shiny, but it's not close enough yet. Right. Uh, next up is Yasha Grit Microfine. Right. I believe that Yasha Grit itself brings up to about a thousand. Yasha Grit Microfine, which was designed by Glenn for acrylics and resin. So works wonders on this. As you can see there, it's a much more even shine off that. But we're not finished yet. After the microphone, I'm gonna go back to my old friend. Brasso. Right. Now I believe that the Brasso over in America is a different formulation to the one we get here in Ireland. So I don't know if this is going to work with the American version of Brasso. Hopefully it does. But uh, I do know that it works with the British version because I use this on resin as well. So, put it on. Give it a few seconds. Work it in. I like using Brasso as a top coat because it's, well, as I said, the early version of it is hard wearing and it just it puts a depth to the shine. As I said in the other video, uh, like any polish, metal polish, it's actually an abrasive. And from what I can find, it brings it brings it up to about ten or twelve thousand grit. There's not much information about it, to be honest with you, that I can find. But you can immediately see the difference of using it. There, there's a deep shine of that antler now. And as I said, I can't. I don't know if the American version works the same because I believe that the formulation is different. Work it in, then buff it off. And there we have the top part of the pen done. All the holes are gone. Right the white part now I'm gonna do basically exactly the same thing on the cap of this pen so what I'll do is I'll just speed through it and um, 
if nothing happens, I won't say it. Right, there's the second part. There's a splash of white I'm looking for. Right, now I wouldn't have got those splashes of white if I hadn't have cut the side off it on the bandsaw. Right, there's that part. Now we get to putting this together. Except there is one more small stage you have to do. Now, because you have used CA, you could get a little ridge there on the edges. So the piece of 240, just put it flat down and twist it. Do not draw it side to side. Just put it down and twist a couple of times, just in case there's any CA residue on the end, which will interfere with the pen going together. Like if you look on that one, if you can see it, there is a slight CA ridge on it. So we get rid of that. And that's all it takes. It's just a little bit of extra care when you're finishing it off. Now we put this thing together. Now, because this is mostly flat, I won't be using the um, the nib part of the kit that Seth sent me over. I will actually be using the flat of my old one. Now what I want to do is pick which end is which. I want to show the white, so I'm leaving the white out one side. Just press the head in. It's of course being awkward. Pressed in, and the white is showing. Uh, come on, focus camera. There we go. There's the head pressed in, and the white is showing just there beside the clip. And press the acceptor in. Now, what I want to do is make sure that the white there lines up with the white there when the pen is closed so what I want to do is screw the acceptor in all the way right. line that up right. and just give it a small push I don't want to give it a big push because I could wreck the threads Sure, the white lines up. Give it a small little push just to lock it in place. Unscrew it. Then push it home. There it is home. On. Okay. Out of the way, I don't need it anymore. Right. Put the ink inside and close it up. Now, I never ink one of these pens. Because there was one day I was talking to a guy who does calligraphy and he was explaining that um, fountain pens, the first time they're used, they get a set in the nib. And uh, that kind of sets to whoever's the first person to use it.
right, there we go, there's the whites lined up. And um, that the only person that ever should ever write with one of these is the person who owns it. Because if the nib sets wrong, it's gonna be scratchy. Right. Now, that's one done out of red deer antler. Right. Now, there's another type of antler which I don't have much of at all. It's called Sika. Right. It's from a Sika deer. And they call it Poor Man's Ivory. Um, I'll do another pen out of this one next week. Right, and, sh and you'll see why it's called Poor Man's Ivory. So I've only got this piece of it. Right. But, uh, so there's that pen. Hopefully the camera is actually picking up the shine that's on that thing. Right. And that's without a CA finish on it. That's just very careful sanding and brasso. Right. So I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll See you in the next one.